Meta found a novel way to track Android users. This story and more on ThreatWire. Certification authorities are a critical part of the HTTPS protocol. They prove the site's identity and enable encryption between the browser and the server. Which certification authorities' certificates are trusted are technically decided on a browser-by-browser -browser basis. So you must have really messed up to no longer be trusted by one of the world's most popular browsers. On May 30th, 2025, the Google security blog issued an announcement that Google Chrome will no longer trust certificates from two previously trusted CAs, Chonghua Telecom and Netlock. According to the Google security blog, these two CA owners have failed expectations and followed patterns representing a, quote, loss of integrity. Over the past several months and years, we have observed a pattern of compliance failures, unmet improvement commitments, and the absence of tangible, measurable progress in response to publicly disclosed incident reports. When these factors are considered in aggregate and considered against the inherent risk each publicly trusted CA poses to the internet, continued public trust is no longer justified. Deprecation of the trust of these groups as certificate authorities goes into effect by putting a page interstitial for all websites with certificates from these groups issued after July 31st, 2025. A hacker by the name of BruteCat was able to find an attack chain to get the phone number of any Google account. Using the username recovery endpoint normally reserved for browsers that do not support JavaScript, the attacker discovered two endpoints that when used in tandem could check if a Google account exists. This is only given a certain phone number and account name when checking. In addition, they were able to pull masked phone numbers and values to bypass the bot guard tokens from rate limiting the calls. Google began deprecating the ability to show account names from unauthenticated endpoints starting in 2023, and by 2024, they were completely gone. However, BruteCat was able to see the account name by sharing a document via Looker Studio, a Google-created data visualization product. BruteCat was able to create a series of scripts that allowed them to brute force phone numbers from Google accounts. They estimated that it would take only 20 minutes to brute force the phone number for an account that utilized a US-based area code. The team at 404 Media was given early knowledge of the vulnerability and BruteCat was able to pull the phone number just by knowing a given email address from the 404 Media team. BruteCat originally disclosed this early April 2024 and was awarded leet dollars for the find by Google. The payout was eventually elevated to 5K USD. And by June 6, Google had confirmed that the Node.js recovery form had been deprecated. The disdain for information tracking is getting worse because Meta and Yandex were found using a new technique to track and identify Android users. The team behind this discovery named it Local Mass, as the tracking and identification system utilizes localhost to connect browsers to users. The Meta implementation started when a user first opened the native Facebook or Instagram Android app and the app would start listening to UDP and TCP ports. The next time the user visited any site in a browser that utilized or had the Meta Pixel, the Pixel would then send cookie info to those native apps via WebRTC SDP munching. It would also send requests to a Facebook endpoint containing relevant information about the browser history. Finally, the actual native app would then transmit the cookie information to another Facebook endpoint, linking the cookie to the Instagram or Facebook account. On the Yandex side, the implementation was very similar, but instead it was using Yandex Metrica scripts instead of Metapixels. Since the pixels used SDP munging, the data flow was not able to be observed using regular debugging tools like Chrome's DevTools. It's estimated that Yandex started using this obfuscation method as early as 2017, while Meta started using it in late 2024. The novel tracking method exploits unrestricted access to localhost sockets on the Android platforms, including most Android browsers. As we show, these trackers perform this practice without any user awareness as current privacy controls, e.g. sandboxing approaches, mobile platform and browser permissions, web consent models, incognito modes, resetting mobile advertising IDs, or clearing cookies are insufficient to control and mitigate it. 
According to the write-up, there are over 5.8 million websites with the Meta Pixel embedded and almost 3 million websites with the Yandex Metrica script embedded. So the chances of you as an Android user not hitting one of these sites is really low. I wonder if this is why it was always felt like Facebook was always listening when you were talking about things near your phone and maybe used your phone but not go on Meta or Yandex related apps. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of June 9th, 2025. If you enjoyed this show, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. Did you happen to catch the live stream this week? I didn't get to do a full writing stream, but next week I'll aim for a longer stream. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Allie Diamond, and you can find me online everywhere at Ending With Allie. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.